Hello folks. I've got a bathroom in here and I just have a, a single bathtub. You can see it's just a tub and a spout. There's no shower here. I want to convert this into a shower. I've got a shower that I bought from Lowe's. I'm going to show you how to install that. One thing though that I have that might be different than yours, the, the, the shower widths are a standard 60 inches. Just so happens that mine is 61 and a half inches. So I've got two three quarter inch pieces of plywood I'm going to put on this wall and put on this wall. You won't need to do that if yours is 60 inches. Hey folks, I wanted to show you the completed product early in the video so you know what you're going to achieve. You've got the shower walls up there, uh, the shower sprayer, I've got the, the handle there. This thing worked great. I also show you how to put this bar on and even though this thing is it's just hollow, I reinforced the wall behind this. So now this is really sturdy. Nobody's going to break and they can actually hang on to it. Here's the issue that I strongly suggest you decide first. This is the one that I took off and you can see how that connects deep in there all the way. You know, the, the, the threads are down here. Whereas this new one I bought, the threads are up here. That's why I had to cut this pipe. They do make these faucets that have a diverter connection underneath here. And if you purchase one of those, then you can avoid having to cut the pipe like I did, having to get the fitting like I did. Much simpler solution. We're back. I've got the plywood on both walls. I said that the walls were an inch and a half wider than the, than the shower insert is. So I've got a three quarter inch piece of plywood on this side, three quarter inch plywood on this side. And the next thing that you need to do is mark the height of where your shower inserts are gonna go. I've already marked that. And find where your studs are. Get a stud finder. So I know that when I bring the shower inserts and come about here, I've got a couple of pencil marks to show where the studs are. All right, folks, as part of the prep for your tub installation, a couple things you're, you'll probably have to do that I've had to do. The edges of this plastic tub are really jagged and you can see there. And I'm just gonna take a, a metal file, just file it off. I'm wearing gonna wear a dust mask here because this stuff is, any dust is not good to breathe. And then because my tub is not the tub that came with this, I don't need these little tabs here. And in fact, these tabs will get in the way. If I bought the tub that matches with this set, these tabs go into slots there. But since mine don't, I'm also gonna file those away. So I shaved off those tabs, same on the side panels that go here. We'll look at those in a bit. But I measured where the studs are on the wall there, and I've just marked on here where the studs are. So here's a stud right there. I just took a pencil, marked it there, and marked it there. What I'm gonna do is pre-drill these holes so that when I take it in there, I don't have to do all that drilling while we're holding this shower piece up. Okay, folks. I've got the shower wall. You put the back piece in first, and I want to show you what I did. I, I mentioned that I have metal studs, so it took a little more effort. So I just put them in, but I want to show you what I did. If you, you most people have wood studs behind theirs, um, but I found each one, and you could put one or two screws in each stud. In this case, I put one, but on this one, I drilled two extra holes on the side flange that didn't come in there so that I can attach it to the wall there. And I've done the same over here. I just yet haven't yet attached it, I'll tell you why. One very, very important piece of information. You need a flat head or a pan head screw like this. Not one that's a countersink like that, but a, a flat head. The reason that I didn't put attach it over here yet is I've got a gap of about a quarter of an inch between this flange and the wall. And the instructions say if you've got any more than a one eighth inch gap to shim it, and I can see why this plastic is pretty stiff. Uh, this thing will crack. This is the right hand side panel, so I'm going to prepare this for installation. It's got holes marked where screws will go to attach it to the wall, and it's got a whole bunch here for where they go into studs. You can either mark where your studs are, but in my case, I've got the plywood there. So I'm just gonna pick, you know, about every fourth, fifth fastener, and I'm gonna just pre-drill those uh, so that when I hang it, all I have to do is install the screw. So, okay, and one technique here, 
using a high speed, the, the faster speed drill and very light pressure, that'll keep this from cracking. And uh, the, I happen to be using 11 64th bit. I've got all the holes that I need drilled in the, the flanges here. Getting ready to install this right side uh, shower wall panel. Before you put it in, make sure this black uh, seal there is in that bottom corner. That thing tends to pop out, or it popped out earlier when I was getting ready to install this. What makes this so easy to install is the back wall we've already put in has these little grooves here to hold the little uh, posts that are behind this panel. So all I need to do is put this, uh, there's a little flange here sticking out. I just make sure that goes in the slot here in the groove there and then let those holes hang into the slots there. There we go. Let that go down. So that's now, that's all there is to it. Now I'm just gonna screw my fasteners into the, the wall here and then this side will be done. When you install your screws, you really should use a long extension like this if you have one rather than just the screwdriver bit that sticks out a little bit because when these go in, you don't want the side of this hitting the shower. This long extension keeps the main body of the drill away from the edge of the shower. And these fasteners, they only need to be snugged up against it. They don't need to be tightened in real tight, just enough to attach the, attach the shower to the wall. All right, folks, I've temporarily hung this side panel here. I've also pre-drilled those holes in the side and the top like we did on the last one. I made them larger than the screw just so that they uh, don't expand as we put the screw in. But the next thing we need to do is identify where we're going to put the shower head. And the reason this is really important is because these things are hollow. These walls are hollow behind this. The last thing we want is this thing attached to this, somebody lean on it, and it crack this wall, or likewise, fall over, and it is only glued on here like some of the instructions tell you to do, and we break this thing out of the wall. So, we need to reinforce the back of this wall here. So I've identified where the center of my faucet is going to be, where the center of the shower is going to be, and I've made a little line here, just so I have awareness. And I've also marked where six feet is on here. So there's the center line of the shower and six feet. And the reason I have done six feet is because six feet is about where the average shower um, height is approximately. So I want to have a good idea. I've bought this adjustable shower rod. The other thing I know is that when I put in the wand, the shower uh, sprayer here, those stick up about eight inches. I've already measured that. And if this was at its highest point and we had this thing in here, the spray would be coming out at about six foot eight. I'd say that's more than high enough, might even be too high, uh, but it's adjustable. So maybe a real tall person would like it. And then of course we can adjust it much lower. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place this rod so that the shower sprayer is going to be right there, is going to be right in the center of, of the tub. So what I want to do here is just mark where these attachments are, because what I'm going to do is measure, and this doesn't have to be perfect, we're just going to mark them approximately, if it moves a tiny bit, that's fine, because that's where I need to go reinforce. Now as I figure out how much uh, depth I have behind this, I, I remember me showing you that I had a gap up here because this thing is not exactly 60 inches. So I've got a shim here, I wanna measure the gap. Measure it however you want, but I'm gonna measure by putting a shim in there. The shim goes to right there. That's where it comes in. I take my tape measure and measure that, and I get about eh, 3 16 to a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna add that dimension to the other measurement I'm gonna take here. So I'm gonna take this off the wall and show you our next step. I've got the panel off of the wall and I've marked where those marks were for the, the shower rod, these were the two marks where I put the attachment, or where we're gonna attach it to the wall. And this is where we need to reinforce these two spots. 
but I need to see how much depth of wood I need. So I'm going to take a, a straight edge here that is a, that lays on top of the two flanges because these are the flanges that are against the wall. And here's my mark where that approximate spot is. I just have two lines there. And all I'm going to do then is take a straight edge. You can use something like this or you can use a tape measure. And I'm just going to see what the distance is from the surface up to the bottom of my straight edge. And I get one and five eighths inches. And I'll measure this one too. I'm sure it's the same thing. So I need wood that's one and five eighths inches thick. But in addition, remember I had about a three sixteenths of a inch gap up at the top. So I need about one and three quarters, one and 13 sixteenths inch thick wood here. Okay, I got the reinforcements on the wall here. And it turned out that I needed them to be a little bit thicker than I thought. What I did was I first put them on the way I showed you without these black shims in there. And then when I had the panel on the wall, I pressed at that location and I could still feel there was a gap that this thing was moving. So I put the shims in there, these black shims that you can see. Turns out this is about one and seven eighths inches thick. So if you end up with the same shower installation, one and seven eighths seems to be the right number. And then when I put it up here, it was just perfectly touching this. I could feel as I pushed on it, it was rock solid. So now I've got a good location for uh, attaching my shower rod. Now I'm gonna hook the panel up here and attach to the wall. This is really a one person job for this panel. So just slide it in. And like I said, I could feel it perfectly. So that's, that's rigid, that's where I marked it. And right there, feels really good. The, the panel touches everywhere the way we want it to. So I'm happy about that. Now what we want to do is shim the gaps up at the top at the flange uh, I've got these composite shims. I, I got these at either Home Depot or Lowe's. Two dollars for a package of composite shims. This is what one of them looks like. So I'm going to put these shims in there and attach that. And I'm going to go attach these like so. And we'll be ready for the next step. This is the Kohler shower rod that I bought and the attaching hardware. And the instructions are pretty poor, but it's not hard to figure out what we need to do here. So this little block here gets attached to the wall. So I have to attach this to the shower and there's another one down here at the bottom. Uh, but of course this is, you know, the shower. You gotta be real careful of this. So I'm just gonna drill a hole right in the middle of that where this is going to attach. And it's gonna be a hole slightly bigger than I need because I don't want the screw to break this. And, and then I'm gonna, later on, I'm gonna caulk around the edge of this just so if any water gets behind this, it doesn't get into the hole. And you can see what that looks like inside there. So I'm going to do that on both top and bottom here. And uh, whatever your attachment, you might have had something that's one that you glue. There are many different options here. I just didn't like the idea of glue. Uh, but those work perfectly fine. That's actually easier. But I wanted a little bit heavier duty uh, shower pole here. I drilled these two holes. And I wanted to stop and show you. Uh, what I did here, I was real gentle, and as soon as I broke through the plastic, I didn't go any further because remember, we've got the wood behind it, and we want our screw, our attached screws, to attach to that wood. So if you're drilling holes in this, you only get one shot at it, well, I guess you could plug these with sealant or something, but pre-assemble your rod if you're drilling holes, measure what it is, the instructions oftentimes are not very good, and then drill your holes. Okay, I got the, the rod installed, and putting that wood behind there really did the trick because this thing is solid both ways. This thing is, is hollow, so if I hadn't done that and somebody leans too hard into this or falls and pulls, it's just going to break your shower and then it's all for naught. Last thing we need to do is replace our faucet with this faucet. You can see how this has an uh, extension like that then I'm going to hook in here, and then when you pull this up, I'll have a hose that hooks up, comes up here, and that's how we're going to be able to take a shower. So all we got to do is take off this old faucet. Most of them just screw on, 
Uh, I've already taken a mirror and looked under there. You may have a set screw right at the back. And if so, you just take an Allen wrench and you unscrew that. This one doesn't. So this one just, well, that wasn't as detached as I thought. Okay, now that the old faucet or spigot is off, you can see that these are significantly different. This one, the old one, attaches all the way here. This is where it screws onto that pipe. Whereas this new one attaches way back there. So you'll want to know what your faucet is before you start on this project. But you can see that once I attach it there, that's going to stick way out. So that's not going to work. So I'm going to have to cut this pipe back. And I wish there was a simpler way, but you don't have to solder. You can do this with some stuff you can get just at Lowe's. This is a little fitting that's, I don't know, seven or eight dollars. And this is a tool to cut this pipe. You just attach it on there and you spin it around a few times and the pipe will cut off. So I'm going to cut this back to about here, thereabouts. Then all I do is push this fitting on there and it's attached. Cool invention though. Okay, I cut this pipe off. I'm not a plumber, but this was so easy. It took me two minutes of spinning this cutter around. I took a file, a metal file, and, and deburred the inside. Here's the shark bite fitting. Uh, I'm just going to follow the instructions and push this on. And uh, that looks good. I'm going to put uh, pipe or uh, Teflon tape around that. The only problem I'm going to have is this thing's going to stick out from the wall a little bit. So I'm going to have to get a, a plate. I've got one, but it won't take up quite enough gap. But you can get uh, plates like this at a hardware store at Lowe's. This here is the part that I bought to close the gap behind the new tub spout. This is the ring that I showed you. I, I shortened it and I cut a little slot in there because once you install this, you're not gonna have access to the uh, hex there, but that way this can slide right over top of it. So let me get this installed and we'll finish it up. That's pretty solid. This will go back like that. And I... All right, folks, the project is finished. Wanted to show you the, the project in action. I've got the, the shower sprayer connected down here. We'll turn that on. Hit that in. We got water coming out, so that's great. I don't have the shower, the shower curtains here, but I don't have it closed. Uh, I've caulked all the way around underneath here. And just so if anybody splashes, gets up in that little joint there. Uh, I've also caulked around the top. You caulk where you think you need to caulk it. Now I have a fully functioning shower, whereas before it was just a bathtub and nobody takes uh, baths anymore. So I hope your project is as smooth as mine. Good luck to you.